Welcome back to the Computational Thinking Series. This is the fourth in our series of videos about computational thinking and FTC blocks programming. In the last video, we explored how a set of instructions with defined inputs will produce a specific result, cake. The results will differ depending on the set of instructions and inputs. Some components of computational thinking can be difficult to understand or apply. So we're gonna take a closer look at how and why you might use this during the video. Right, so in this section, we're going to look at how to decompose a difficult problem. Uh, just as a reminder, decomposition is... Here's an example you might not know how to solve. Let's find the root of 676. Wow, that's a big number. Give me your phone, I need the calculator. You don't need a calculator. What you really need is to break the big problem into a bunch of easier problems to solve. But phone, please? No phone. We're gonna break this down into simpler steps. How about a simpler problem? Pick two numbers, one that is greater than 676 and one that is less than 676. Let's call those numbers X and Y. Well, that doesn't sound too difficult. How about X equals one and Y equals 700? Surely that satisfies the criteria. Yes, but that leaves 698 possible answers. Congratulations. Ugh. What if I took a guess that the square was relatively lower than 700, but was significantly above one? I'll double that guess until I get a number whose square is greater than 676. Would that be good? That sounds like a decent approach to me. Let's look at how that works. Pick a number. 42. Why 42? Um, because it's the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. Also, that's the maximum weight of an FTC robot. Hmm. Okay, 20. That sounds like a non-snark guess. Let's see what happens. 20 times 20 equals 400. 40 times 40 equals 1600. And 80 times 80 equals 6400. Oh, that's neat. I've narrowed it down to some number between 20 and 40. Only 18 choices. So at least I did solve a small problem. Yes, but you still have 18 choices. And while that's infinitely smaller than infinity, it's not the answer to the original problem. Let's think of another small problem to solve. Should we start at 21 and try each number in a sequence until we have the solution? Sure, you do that. However, you have to calculate each square by hand, on paper, using a pencil, and it could conceivably take you a very long time to finish. You are mean. Give me your phone. I am trying to show you, if you must do it longhand, that one solution will prompt you to search for others. Okay. We know it's greater than 20 and less than 40. So what if we take the midpoint of the two and try that? Sounds promising. 30 times 30 equals 900. Congratulations, you just managed to discard 10 possibilities with only one extra guess. Oh, I see where this is going. Okay, how about 25? 25 times 25 equals 625. Wow, that's awfully close. Only two possibilities left. It has to be 26 or 27. I'm getting warmer. Let's try 26 first. That's it. The square root of 676 is 26. And you only had to do three calculations by hand. Or you could have just given me your phone. I could have let you do every one of them by hand. Well, technically I would have only had to do three. Right. So how did we solve the problem? Well, we broke it into two smaller problems. The first problem was to find a reasonable set of numbers wherein some number in the set was the answer. That wasn't too difficult. And the second problem was to have that set of numbers repeatedly until the set was so small that the answer became easy to solve. This is what it looks like in FTC blocks. Beep boop beep boop beep boop. Beep boop beep boop beep boop. Don't worry, we'll explain and show you FTC blocks in detail in the next video. Goodbye, Bye, everyone. everyone.